stories. About two years ago, today, I recently moved to a new city in Canada. I was 21 at the time and single, as I just got out of a shitty relationship, so moving was a fresh start for me. In a new city where nobody knew really except my one guy friend, who we will call Mike. Mike didn't live directly in the city though, but we hung out a lot. Since I was single in a new city, I downloaded Tinder. Everyone my age has this dating app, or hookup app, really. I don't usually do dating apps, but I was bored and was looking for a little fun. Remember, the I don't do dating apps thing once you reach the end of this story. This is the exact reason I don't ever go on them anymore. So, I get on there and I match with a guy, who we will call Andrew. So I didn't message him first or anything because I was doing a lot of swiping and honestly went on with my day doing other things as I just moved and needed to unpack. So a couple of hours later I check my phone and I see Andrew has messaged me several times saying hi, complimenting me, and he even sent a funny pickup line. I always appreciate a good pickup line as I have a good sense of humor about mostly everything and don't take many things that seriously. Keep this in mind too. So I replied and we got to chatting. He eventually asked for my number so I gave it to him. It was fine from there, really. Nothing weird was said. So he asked me out to dinner and a few drinks. I agreed and we met three days later. We met in a public place, obviously. I saw him outside the restaurant leaning on his car. It was a really nice car. He asked me to take a photo of it with the sun setting in the background. I said, okay, sure. Thought it was random, but whatever. We go inside and eat dinner and drink a little bit. And it was a really good date. So I invited him back to my apartment to keep the night going, I guess you could say. It wasn't super late and we were really hitting it off. We get to my door and I was a little bit tipsy as I drank three glasses of wine. I wasn't drunk though, but I kept forgetting my code to my door. So I had it on my phone and I got us in. The rest of the night wasn't weird at all. I woke up beside him the next morning, majorly hung over, and we obviously had fun the night before. He left and all was good. I really didn't want to pursue anything further so I texted him and said, Last night was great, but I'm not looking for anything serious right now. And he freaked out on me saying I was wrong for leading him on and whatever else was said. Okay, fine. Fair. You can have your opinions. That's by all means fine. So I ghosted him. Just didn't really feel like talking anymore after that. As he said degrading and subjective things, I left it at that and moved on with my life, as we all would. About a week goes by, and I'm out running errands to finish the last details of getting my apartment furnished. I come home, and he's sitting in my living room with flowers and a bottle of wine. I was drinking at dinner. I was immediately like, how did you get in here? As you need a key fob and obviously a door code. The door code thing after I thought about it did not surprise me. He remembered it as I had it in and out in my open phone. But the key fob I was confused about how he got the extra one I have. He admitted to taking it when I was asleep when he stayed the night. I was really mad someone would do that after not knowing someone for like 16 hours in person. So I kicked him out and I was a little shooken up about the situation. I blocked his number immediately after he kept apologizing. I just couldn't forgive him after doing that and invading my home, which is a safe space. Fast forward again to two weeks later, 
I was on a little getaway in Seattle with my friend Mike. I posted Instagram stories on the trip and I forgot until after he followed me. We matched on Tinder. This is a common thing guys my age do on Tinder. So he knew I was gone for a weekend. Mike and I are coming back to my place to drop bags off and chill for a little bit at the apartment. I walk into my apartment with Mike this time and Andrew was on my couch with a girl. I was completely in shock he got in again. The girl even had the audacity to say, Who are you and why are you in Andrew's apartment? I lost my mind on both of them and asked him how in the fuck he got in again. He had no made up story this time. He just flat out didn't know what to say except I didn't know when you'd be back. So I've been staying here with this bitch. Mike was mad as fuck about the situation as I told him all about it weeks ago. I demanded to know how he got into my apartment again. He said he made multiple copies of the key fob after he took it. My heart completely sank and I threatened to call the cops if they did not get out of my apartment and gave me every fob he copied. I was pissed and felt so invaded of my space. About a month goes by and I was still thinking about it every once in a while. He was blocked on every social media I could find him on. I thought he was gone until I randomly saw him places more and more frequently like it wasn't a one time thing. I saw him at least seven times and I was in public every single time. The last time however I was walking the seawall alone and it was getting kind of late and dark out. It was about 9 p.m. in the beginning of June and I stopped to tie my shoe and when I stood up he was right there. I fucking panicked because I genuinely felt threatened by him at this point. He kept asking why I ghosted him and didn't accept him coming around anymore and how I could be so mean to someone who he was so into. He kept trying to grab my arm to talk to me and started yelling. I was in tears because his next moves I had no idea about. Someone thankfully heard and intervened. I told them I was not okay and they called the cops. He obviously ran and the police asked me to identify him. I gave them his name and they couldn't find anyone with that name. So now it felt like me wondering if that was even his name. I remembered I had a picture of his license plate in my phone. He had a nice car and wanted me to take a picture of it with my phone as the sun was setting behind him. Douchey, I know. So I gave them that information and they told me the plates weren't even registered. So now I'm mind blown by the whole thing and very confused, even a little worried. They couldn't do a whole lot with what I provided, but they said they would update me if they find anything and to contact them if he gets into my apartment again or if I saw him out. I never did, thankfully. But to this day, I'm always looking over my shoulder for that stalker. I have since then moved and haven't seen him again. So to the guy who broke into my apartment on more than one occasion. I had a tender date over for the evening. We talked for a couple of hours, drank some wine, watched a movie, and we had sex. Then things went a little downhill. We laid in bed and suddenly it looked like she was about to black out. So I helped her sit up and asked if I could help her get her some water and shit. And she didn't speak a word. She just sat there with her hands and her hair for a couple of minutes and then she puked all over my sheets. At this point I wanted to get her to the shower ASAP but she was just stunned or something. 
I did not know what to do. After a couple of minutes, I finally convinced her to get up and brought her to the shower so she could clean herself off while I could clean the sheets and all that. Every five minutes, I checked on her to see if she was okay, but she would just sit on the floor with the shower running and wouldn't talk. It was all very awkward. After 20 minutes or so, I brought her a towel and some clothes and we sat on the edge of my bed and she told me that she was born without a womb. She cried. I calmed her down and we finally went to sleep. The next day, I made breakfast and she went home. Weirdest date I'd ever had. This took place in June of 2018, about two weeks before I turned 18. I'm female. I just finished my A-levels and decided to join Tinder for a joke, just to have a bit of fun and waste time. I thought it would be fun to put my Snapchat in my bio just to see how many people added me, and I admit I enjoyed the attention from guys. People added me, but no one actually messaged me except one guy. I'll keep his name anonymous. It was probably me. I have a tendency to message girls and waste their time and act like they want to talk to me. Anyway, getting back to the story. This guy was 20, so it definitely wasn't me. I was 17 at the time. Again, definitely not me. And was about an hour drive away from me. This is important later. We started off just innocently chatting. The conversation was dry, but it killed boredom, so I held the conversation. One day, he randomly popped up asking, so when are we going to meet then? I was hesitant at first, but I agreed. In the end, after I ran it over my parents, I invited him over to my house. I don't know what I was thinking, but I told him he could come over. He got there the next few days at 9 a.m. Bearing in mind, he lived an hour away from me. First red flag. I was confused as hell and wasn't even dressed for the day. Nevertheless, I invited him in and finished getting ready. We just chilled and watched films, Netflix and chill, all day before heading off around 2 p.m. We chilled by the beach for a bit, beach and chill. We went back to my house at around 5 p.m. I was expecting him to go home after that, but no, he stayed. We watched a couple of more films, and every now and then I would look over to him and catch him flat out staring at me. We would lock eyes, and he would say something creepy like, I love your eyes. I regret to say we ended up kissing as you do on a date. A lot I felt awkward, and being a naive 17 year old who had no place on Tinder to begin with, on her first real date, I thought that was what you were supposed to do. He left around 10 p.m. He was at my house for 13 hours, but there were no sparks at my end. I was expecting this to be a one-time thing. I'm sorry that you wasted 13 hours with her. Nope, he turned up at my house at 9 a.m. again, like two days later. I went along with it because I had nothing better to do. Didn't leave again until 9 p.m. I roll. At this point, I had no interest in seeing him again and didn't really feel a romantic connection with him. I will admit, I may have led him on 
as I never actually told him I wasn't interested. Well, you fucking probably should have. Looking back now, I should have told him, well, there it is. And maybe the next event wouldn't have happened. Yeah, if you fucking don't tell the guy that you like him and he assumes that you like him, then he's going to keep coming around. That's how fucking shit works. Learn how dating works. My birthday rolls around. Well, the day before, he shows up at 9 a.m. again and takes me out. We go to the mall and he buys me so much shit. I kept saying, no, you don't have to and let me buy this. But he insisted because it was my birthday. I had only met this guy twice before and known him all of five minutes and he was buying me so much shit like clothes, makeup, and um, sexy underwear. I was still only 17. Now it's getting creepy. Even though my birthday was the next day, I felt like I was being treated like a prostitute. Every time we walked around, he would force my hand into his or try and kiss me. I felt awkward. Anyway, we get back to my house around 6 p.m. I come home to flowers from him that he had delivered to my house. I wonder if this poor bastard knew she was only 17. We chill in my room. I didn't know what to do. I felt trapped. I felt like I couldn't tell him to leave because he had just spent so much money on me. You could have told him to leave. Just because a guy spends money on you does not mean that you don't have the right to tell him to fucking leave. Anyway, he tried to have sex with me. He kept saying, come on, didn't you have a nice birthday? And I came all this way for you. Just creepy shit like that. Trying to get me to sleep with him. I just kissed him and told him I didn't want to. I wasn't a virgin, but I definitely didn't want to fuck him. He finally leaves and just breaks down crying. I don't know why. I just felt so trapped. I try and be cold with him over message and stuff for the next few days, hoping to scare him off. Nope. About three days after my birthday, I get home from work at 9.30 p.m. Guess whose goddamn car I see parked outside my fucking house. Yep, I walk in and he's just sitting there chatting with my fucking family. They seem to really like him, even though I told them how fucking creepy he was being. We end up going to a local pub. Wait, what the fuck country are we in? You're 17 and you're going to the fucking pub? We get back to my house and I'm pretty drunk. So I suggest more drinks and crack open a bottle of bubbly I saved from my birthday. As we are drinking more, he gets quieter. I look up at him and ask him what's wrong. And suddenly he grabs me, kisses me, and tries to put his hand up my skirt. I immediately push him off and stare angrily at him. He then looks at me with a really sinister look and says, I deserve it. Because he had alcohol, he couldn't drive home. So he had to stay over. No fuck he didn't. I tell him I'm too drunk and I want to go to bed. Luckily my brother happily showed him to the guest room. And I didn't see him again until the morning. I woke up around 9am and walked downstairs to find him cuddling my cat in the garden. I tell him I had a call from work saying that they need me in an hour. And that he needs to leave. He tried to protest, saying that he'll wait till I'm finished and we can hang out. But I tell him, fuck no, and that I'm seeing a friend later. And yet he still protests, saying we can all hang out together. Eventually he takes no for an answer and leaves. I cry and cry and tell my mom everything. I meet my friend and tell her all about him and that I'm going to leave in a couple of days and tell him I don't want to see him anymore. However, that same night I get a lengthy paragraph from this guy professing his undying love to me. 
Some of the most memorable quotes from this are, You were my whole world. I'd be nothing without you. I'm so glad I've met you. I can't wait to share my life together. This was it. I had to straight up tell him. I told him everything. That I didn't feel a connection to him. And that what he did to me when I was drunk was not okay. I even offered to return the things he bought for me, but he said no. Surprisingly, he actually apologized and said he was sorry for making me feel uncomfortable. Brilliant. That's just a thought. Ah, uh, nope. He started stalking me. Anyone who uses shitty ass Snapchat will know that you can view a map that tells you where all your friends are. You can turn that shit off so people can't see you, but I customized mine so that only people I'm close with can see where I am. He was one of them. I forgot to turn it off. And whenever I went out, he was there about an hour later. This happened two more times, once again with the same friend when we visited a reservoir near my town. There was no reason for him to be there. So I messaged him. I asked him what the fuck he was doing at the reservoir when I got home. He said he was taking pictures, but the reservoir would have been more like a three hour round trip for him to drive. And he had never mentioned photography to me before. So I did not believe him. It happened a third time and that's when I blocked him. I was with my goddamn extended family in a restaurant, yet this time he messaged me his location on Snapchat. He was in the fucking building. I had to then come up with an excuse to tell all my extended family, who I haven't seen for months, why we had to leave. I told my mom the truth and then she explained to them after. They were understanding. I'd had enough. I didn't even message him again. I blocked him on everything. And I didn't hear from him again. In 2015, I was about 20. I was using Tinder a lot. Sometimes I would go out with a girl and we wouldn't connect or I'd get stood up. I went to meet up with some friends from IU and Bloomington for a weekend of just hanging out and enjoyment. And I figured I might meet a nice girl and hang out and get to know. I do not remember the girl's name particularly, but we matched and we had talked for about a day and decided to hang out at her apartment that evening. I told my friend what I was going to go do that night and that the apartment was only five minutes away from their place. I got in my car and put my GPS on and made it to the apartment in a few minutes texting her and asking which apartment door was hers. I walked around the open complex searching for the right numbers until I got to her building. I texted her to meet me at the door and to let me in because I was sure I was at the building. She said okay and I stood outside waiting for about 5 minutes. Let me just say that it is about 10 o'clock in the winter. I noticed something as I looked at my phone waiting to a window with blinds from the bottom floor open and what I could assume was four different people staring at me. I texted her asking her where she was and she had told me that the door to her building was open and her apartment was the first on the right. I walked to the door and was surprised it was unlocked. As soon as the door to the complex was shut I turned to the left and heard from behind the door someone say he's outside the door. At that point I realized that the door I was at was the same one with the people staring out the window at me and I got a gut reaction to leave or something was going to happen to me. 
I walked out of the complex and went by the window which I noticed the lights had been shut off and I ran to my car and got out of there as fast as I could. As I got back to my friend's place I explained to them the situation and they didn't really take it as serious as I did. As the night went on we had a few beers and before I went to bed I got a text saying where did you go I have been waiting for you. I blocked the number and went to sleep. If you are ever on a dating site, always meet in public.